Bonjour, greetings, salutations. Here for another episode of uh, some stuff, topics on cannabis, and yeah, we're gonna have some fun tonight. So I wanted to talk about a few things, uh, mainly uh, some some stuff about curing, some stuff about uh, trimming your flower and whatnot, some stuff about cloning, and. Uh, yeah, a little bit about some extracts that are, I don't know, if we've we've dabbled on this subject before, but I feel it's important that people should know the difference between having a full spectrum extract and what is the difference between having everything stripped out uh, if you feel any of the effects or what if you do feel anything. So I don't know if you can elaborate on that at all or I've been, I've been, uh, I've been paying attention now because I get lots of samples and stuff sent in and different all kinds of different extracts and whatnot so i pay really close attention to how they make me feel and what i what i try to what i or what i think i'm going to get out of it from terpenes to how i feel and uh i just i've been noticing that a lot of things that aren't full spectrum don't really have an effect on me and i just wanted to know if maybe there's some other people out there that feel the same way uh yeah but it's, if some of them, I mean, I know they, they taste good, they're smooth, they're easy to smoke and, and what, well, I don't have anything bad to say about them that way, but I just am not feeling it, no matter how much I ingest, so, yeah. And well, I noticed that having, there, go ahead. Well, I think this is a good subject. It's not one that I'm uh, particularly knowledgeable in, but extracts is something that we're looking towards getting into. And not just cannabis either, right? Um, as uh, I told you last week, uh, we just got our business license, right? And one of yes. the congratulations, avenues, thanks, buddy. And one of the things we want to do is extracts, and but not cannabis. We're talking about like lavender, um, all like all these essential oils, like, that the other, like bo have. other botanicals, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, um. Being that I, my knowledge is very limited, right? Uh, my in terms of extracts, I've done like made honey oil using isopropyl alcohol, and I've got the rosin press. Back in the day, I remember we even used to try and use methyl hydrate to try and make honey oil with, which I wouldn't recommend that again. I don't think, but uh, well, I've well, used gasoline yeah. antifreeze, man, in a pinch. So I yeah I've, I've used some nasty solvents there's some good ones and there's some ones that are no <laughs> you don't yeah. use them again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes you got to bring a little redneck ingenuity into it i guess eh? <laughs> oh yeah I've, well hey i've been up north and uh uh, this one one particular incident uh, i'd had somebody bring some chronic or some grass back up from Winnipeg for me and they decided that uh, they needed to spray the outside of the Ziploc bags in cologne so the grass was horrible it, I can't remember what kind of cologne it was but just had a god-awful taste that was just unbearable so uh, I said to my partner well and we could try to make some oil out of this and at least catch a buzz and uh, yeah I mean the oil was okay but we used gasoline antifreeze from a gas station up in northern Manitoba, so I mean, our our choices of solvents up there were pretty limited. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm sure that there was some sort of additive in there that we probably shouldn't have been smoking, but they got the job done. Uh, but I do not recommend that to anybody at all. So yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, that goes. We pile that into the young and dumb category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well exactly that well that's like for me that's up there with like smoking out of a pop can right i mean yeah. it's we don't we don't do that anymore so you no know, we we learn we grow <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah, all these things uh, it's like graduating high school like, and you stop smoking out of the pop cans and hot, hot knives although i did try doing hot knives a couple of years ago i didn't have a dab rig and so i was like okay i gotta do some dab somehow and so that was the best thing i could think of and I don't know. Was, I'll, I'll I'll wait for my rig. <laughs> they, well, I mean, hot knives have their time and place. I always found that uh, with those, it was always better when somebody else was serving you. Yeah, I, I could never get a good 
hit myself and I actually have a probably can't see it on camera but I do have a burn mark from a hot blade knife uh trying to serve myself when I was like in my teens so yeah it's something that it does hit you pretty hard if they're done right but I don't know a rig hits just as good a lot safer to use uh yeah so I recommend a rig over hot knives any day (laughs) but getting back to other botanicals it's funny you mentioned that because there's another i'd like to give them a shout out to johnny's green extractions another channel i follow some guys they made uh they're into uh they made an extractor and stuff and they made it this for the glass tubes a safe one that you can walk you set it and you walk away from it and it does the blasting safe location so that you're not sitting there holding your can of butane or whatnot but they did uh for their herbal infusers for inside their house for or i think it's called a herbal infuser but it's for aromatics it's like for like a potpourri almost you put essential oils in it to make your house smell nice so they put a bunch of mint and other stuff that they grew a bunch of herbs in their garden and extracted the oil from that and collected that and made their own essential oil so i thought that was pretty neat to see them step outside of the realms of cannabis a little bit and show that you can extract the oils from any kind of plant that has a, I guess, an essential oil. Sorry, but I was distracted there. <sighs> Watching the wife rolling joints here on the side there. That's all right. Uh, we should put a shout out for them or something across the channel. They do they do exactly what we're doing right now, but videos. Uh, okay. They document their growth. It's two old dudes in Winnipeg that show the case their personal growth. Uh, and they, they have a few sponsors now as well. And they're into making extracts. Extracts is one of their things. And they extracted some mint and a few other herbs or something from their garden uh, last weekend and made their own. Uh, essential oil to put in a diffuser to make their house smell like mint and whatever so apparently it worked really good okay that's so yeah awesome. i guess you could do any kind of just put like lavender in there or whatever or lilac bushes or anything skunk weed <laughs> yes, anything that has a, a anything uh, aromatic yeah i think every pothead's uh dreamed about that uh like uh a weed scented cologne or car fresheners or whatever remember even back yeah. in high school um we, how we joke around about that where the hell did i put my lighter well i've seen they have a like a skunk incense and stuff but i've never bought one but i wouldn't mind my place smelling like skunk at all i would think it'd be great Oh, I, I, I think it's a great smell. And, like, certain strains of weed, too, eh, would be just, like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like, some of those uh, fruity, I, I think almost, like, tropical fruity smells, eh, where it's just, it's not, like, those blueberries and the other uh, citrusy ones that we're used to smelling. Right? So, yeah. I, I, I just think tropical is the word that seems to come to my mind when I can't describe it, but, like, because we got this ghost train haze that has that smell right there. And if you could get that, oh, okay. like concentrate that smell and like burn that off in an incense or in a diffuser, like you were talking about, oh, that'd be that'd be great. It'd be it's, the bomb. It's yeah, I'll have to get some research, some scientists to break down some chronic for us and uh, start making our own line of essential oil or even cologne, or whatnot, or body wash or something. Smell like heat all the time. Laundry yeah, detergent. <laughs> Yeah, I'll oh. bet you that would sell too. I wonder. Uh, oh, big I time! What the process is for, for that would be. I guess that would be pretty much as extract your say uh, skunk weed. Since yeah, you brought that up, right? We'll go with that. So you extract that, and then I guess you would just add that into whatever you're using for say your bar of soap or your body wash uh, mixture. I guess, hey. I guess so. Either you have to break. Like, I don't know if they just mix that oil in with everything or if there's other components to break down out of that. Like, whatever gives off a scent, if that's a certain component, I'm not sure, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Maybe we can get our IT department to chime in on that. Yeah. (laughs) Flowers need different extraction processes. 
Okay, so we got to so stand going to give you... All there's steam, there's heat, there's press, there's, yeah. So, like, no, not, no one, no, no one you thing can't is just the shoot way for everything, everything through a steam extractor or whatever. Certain things to get the smells and the properties out need certain processes. Some are more delicate than others. Okay. I was going to give, yeah, uh, I'd like to give your seeds to a shout out out of, because we did a major seed pop last week. <coughs> okay. Or, Another phenol I started, and I did, uh, I put 10 of your grapefruit in there and 10 of your Durban Poison Times Afghani Cross. Okay. And the viability of them so far is more than, uh, well, let's just say in 24 hours, all 10 or all 20 of them popped. A couple of them are twins, which is what I've never seen in a seedling before. Two come out of one. So that's pretty neat. I don't think I've uh, seen it. Yeah, out of uh, over some of the other seeds that I have that are from like a whatever well-known seed company, they're not even showing yet. We're on like day three now, I think. They're just, or starting to show a little bit of a taproot out the bottom. Yours are like pfft, up nice. there, so. Cool, yeah. man. That, so that's that some good. That's their, shows that they're viable. Their the viability is really good. They take off well, so. That's some good genetics you have going on. Right on, man. That's awesome to hear. Because, well, you know, one of the things I've been working towards is starting up my own breeding programs. Yeah. And so one of the things that is, is getting other growers, first of all, to grow your strains. That to, that, to me, is the coolest thing. You know, our friend Murray, uh, he's given samples around to friends and um, everybody seems happy so far. So, and, and then... But I have never met most of those people, and I've got a pretty good relationship with you. And uh, you're a grower I look up to, so to have you saying that, hey, man, your seeds are doing good, I love it. So it uh, makes caribou heart cultivations, uh, you know, makes us look a little bit better. It makes me feel good about myself. Well, yeah, because I've, I've ordered, I've, I've made my own seeds that just don't even pop. I've had other seeds that... Don't pop and or take you know like a week and stuff and so that shows that yours are anxious. There it, it's <laughs> there's lots of life in them and that's good. So I mean they might be very vigorous and take off really good. So I have uh, I I have I have several of my own clients that ask specifically for a grapefruit strain. So it's something I don't know a lot about yet. I'm assuming I think it's a more of a sativa. Am I correct? I believe it was. It's been a couple years since I messed with those. Um, I don't know the exact um, background behind them because they were bought off of uh, an, a Facebook site or somebody selling them off Facebook or something like that. They were supposed to be feminized and I popped three or four. One of them turned out not to be feminized and I went away to work for a couple weeks and I came home. And everything <laughs> in my room was pollinated, and I just had seeds everywhere. And so I was just kind of like, oh, man, this is just too much. And so I never really messed with the uh, grapefruit again after that. I do recall it being nice uh, nice and crystally though. But I just, I can't, uh, yeah, I, 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 can't, I, I can't offer you an exact background of where they came from. Whereas most of the stuff I have, like, a great... Did it have any sort of citrusy profile to it? You know, like like grapefruit. I do recall that. I and I recall bragging about that. Actually, I'd bring friends into the room to show as you do, and they'd be kind of smelling that, and even them calling it out and saying that is a citrusy smell. Uh, not nice. calling it grapefruit specifically, but they could pick out the citrus. So okay. I, I, uh, I'm really interested in uh, seeing how that one goes because it's just, you know how it is with projects. There's, you can only do so many at once and those ones just got back shelved by uh, the male scare when that happened. So it would be nice to see. Well, the pollen is scary. It, it can take over an entire room and turn everything into seeds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well can vouch for that this jar here was just about completely full and then uh you know people just want random seeds this is the random seed jar right so when we're done um 
picking our, our the, most of the seeds out of the buds that we want. All the leftovers just go in here. And that's oh, that one, okay. a lot of that is strictly the result of, ju uh, of that, just what one male plant can do. And I also should point out that that male plant was not in the same room as the other ones. It was in, you know, in the same building, but it was about 20 feet away through a yeah. wall door and all that good stuff. And it still got in there and destroyed a whole crop that <clears throat> when you're only growing four to half a dozen plants at a time and they all get seeded out like that, that's devastating. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's all of your that's all your medicine gone to. to I mean, it's in in hindsight, all the seeds are okay, but you don't have any very usable medicine after that, right? There's yeah. not a whole lot of bud. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, unfortunately, it's, it's it's a setback as well, right? Because then you have to find your medicine somewhere else, or now you got to wait for your next crop to be ready. You got to tear your room down essentially and clean up all that pollen. Murray was just telling me about that. He had the same thing happen in one of his tents. Had to start over from scratch again. Yeah, uh, it's, it totally bleach everything he said. So I guess if you don't get every single speck of that, you'll just keep pollinating your crops over and over again, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. If you think if you got pollen uh, collected on the floor. It doesn't really take much to walk by it and dust it up and all of a sudden you got that up in your leaves and onto your pistols pollinating again and it's uh yeah it's okay. well i know it's like what the way i've been doing that the, the selective pollinating now i go in and i shut i shut off all the fa i shut off everything that's blowing it can blow air like dehumidifier everything and then uh, i've just been going with like a piece of tin foil folded with like the pollen just in the in the V part in the in the crack, and then I go with the Q tip. I got it, man. It looks like I don't even anything on that Q tip at all, and just pick my bud and just tap tap it on there. And I've been getting like twenty seeds per per plant or per per strain doing it that way, or twenty five. So I I can see now if I was to do two specks or three or you know on each side of the bud. I would have an entire cluster of, 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 of seeds. But I've also seen how tapping at the very top, it'll go all the way down that bud. You'll have seeds all the way through it. That's it. Oh. So I don't know how that pollen travels through the bud after, but it's crazy, man. And, and yeah, you'll have seeds at the top and at the bottom. Even though I didn't pollinate down there, it still made its way down there. Like the microscopic speck or something, but... Yeah, I don't take much. Well, I just think of, uh, remember chalk brushes in school, right? When you hit them. Oh, yeah. Up. It's like that, but on a much smaller level. It doesn't take much. You get down there and all of a sudden you got that pistols pollinated and you got seeds coming. Um, speaking of seeds and breeding projects, so do you remember that Chemdog Afghani F2 male I had uh, downstairs there? I showed you he last does. time. Okay, so I killed yeah. that about a week or two ago or probably about a week ago uh got the pollen on that um and so i just flipped over four plants that i'm going to use for my uh next breeding project mostly not so much for projects i just i don't want to work with these strains anymore so i'm pollinating them in hopes that i'll be able to bring something really close to it back when i want to go back to them so right, i right. bought a wedding cake a meathead a uh what do i have in there wedding cake meathead no there isn't a slurry cane no that's wow i can't believe i'm flaking out like this no it's not a silver haze no it's not real skills you have a violator no I, we got some clones off of those and this actually this is another weird one our we did a batch of clones that had like the violator our amherst diesel and stuff that sarah's thinking of in the 707 headband and the slurricane and most of those we lost more clones than we were able to keep never happened before yeah usually like, clones are like 95 did you, did you do your cloning like 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 two weeks ago roughly yeah. yeah. When it was when we had that hot spell, 
Yeah. Yeah, we did actually. Yeah, yes, we would have been caught. Actually, yeah, because we... I was dying down, and yeah, it was hot. No, we actually we cut. Uh, after you me, I, I, something was in the air. Or something. I lost a couple of trays of clones myself, and I have ones that are kind of questionable right now too. They just look sick, and I think it was either that that view that we could because I don't have any AC in here either. So when it's hot out. It's hot out, like, and it's, I either have to shut a few lights off or, uh, during the summer, it is what it is, right? Till yeah. we get back into the cooler nights and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I noticed, like, so this has been either stunted, stunted growth and, uh, yeah, some sort of effect, either from a little bit of uh, extra humidity and whatnot. I think that plays a fact, I, I, I didn't want to talk about that particular part about clones. Actually, I wasn't really sure exactly what I was going to mention about clone. I had something specific earlier. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I think that certain times uh, with heat or whatnot can play a factor in when you do your planting and the outcome of them. Yeah, I could see that. It's uh, more prone to uh, stem rot at the peat puff, and that was seems to be a lot of what was going on. Uh, so maybe the peat puffs themselves were just getting too hot or whatever, and they couldn't, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I've you know. also heard that certain times of the moon is when people do their cloning for other plants, so why wouldn't it apply to cannabis as well, right? Like, huh. at certain Yeah, yeah. my stepdad I was very that. adamant on when... Like he's he, he's kind of crazy in his own way and whatnot, but he was into all that kind of shit for fishing and was always like spot on with like when to go out when the fish would be biting. So he was doing that same shit when we were all growing together. Uh, there were certain times when he's like, "No, nope, we're not planting today. Today's yeah. a bad planting day. Uh, we're gonna wait." I thought he was crazy, but I I'm starting to learn or think that uh, maybe he. He was on to something with that stuff. Well, because the moon controls the tides that control the way the world moves. So why doesn't it control plants and everything else, right? Exactly. They, they, they react to that movement as well. I think yeah. it actually helps with stretching them out or something if for outdoor plants. Yeah. There's something crazy that happens with the pull of the moon. So, yeah, I, I, I would like to actually... Maybe research that a little bit. Yeah, like when... Uh, because, like, I mean, if, if somebody's planting, uh, say, several thousand clones and you do it on the wrong day, mm -hmm. uh, you could be in some serious trouble. Like for your, you know, it's, uh, say your mother plants don't have any more clones to give or something for a time period, uh, you might be out of a crop or something. It'd be all because of the wrong day you planted on. Exactly, that would be just, and yeah, why not give yourself every advantage? Even if it might sell exactly. silly, it, if it works, who cares? I'd have to pick up a solenary calendar. That shows, uh, <coughs> I don't think the ones, no. I just have ones from the dollar store that are all like Sailor Moon and uh, Lisa Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Transformers over here. So I, I got like diamond parts on one calendar. But no moons or anything, so I'll have to get a few real ones. I found a uh, High Times one that I got a discount on uh, like a month ago because the year's already over <laughs> half over. I've been trying to find a new calendar for all year long pretty much. Couldn't find one because I'm too cheap to pay 20 bucks for one and I didn't think to go to the dollar store. And uh, so I, I found a High Times one at uh, the grow store in Williams Lake, Halls Organics. Shout out to them. And uh, yeah, there's I got it for over half off because there's only like five months left in the year. <laughs> well, that's I know we always got them from the dollar store, and then I actually just remembered I have a few from uh, shout out to B. A. Robinson in Kamloops. Uh, they're like they're massive. They're <laughs> it's like you need a crane to flip them, <laughs> to or like you got to mount them to a piece of wood or something to hang them. Like they're they're too they're too big. <laughs> But maybe those have moons on them. I I could check. Huh. I could give you one if you want. Yeah, that could no, be. Actually, awesome. you need like an yeah, uh, you'd need like an easel or something for it. They're they're huge, like three feet wide by 
I don't know if it's like a novelty calendar or something, but yeah, well, it's super big. Well, I'm going to get you to help me build my new grow room that I got going on here pretty soon. No, we can just do that. We'll dedicate a special wall to the new calendar. Right there, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, no, it's very, uh, we, you have, we keep track of every, all of our feeding, all of our flips, um, any sort of room maintenance and stuff. I don't know if you, I'm a bit muffled because of my torch right now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Keep going, brother. Uh, I was gonna say we we keep track of every single regimen that we do on on our calendars, right? Yeah. Yeah. I all use... of our room maintenance, all of our feeding schedules, all of our um, just everything. When it's time to change bulbs, when it's uh. Shit, I have people's tracking numbers that I forget sometimes. I got everything on my ca everything. Got it. <coughs> I, I can go back and refer. It. Oh, what did I do last crop, or what did I do two years ago? Now, yeah. okay, and yeah. be you know. So it's it's good reference. It's good. It's good. It's good practice to also to keep all of your data and stuff, and just keep it all organized, right? Absolutely. Like you can always look back on it. You don't always really see. Maybe if you had a mistake, something wasn't up on on this crop, or well, at least you can see, okay, well, I changed something with the food or whatever. Uh, that didn't work. Well, we won't do that again. And, yeah, so calendars yeah. are great. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that. And uh, if not, the calendar uh, notebook even, so you can write stuff down. Because, like, uh, oh, uh, yes. like my, my work background is a lot of, union worker and being a shop steward and stuff like that right and one of the things they teach you is you write everything down because you'd be surprised at how quickly you'll start to forget stuff after it happens right and so yeah, you yeah. go if you write it down as soon as it happens whether it be on your calendar or on a notebook or wherever and you go back say even a month later and you could be surprised and a good uh, way to point this out was Chem Dog is it has been one of my favorite strains. It was my first strain where I got a really good harvest off of one plant. I got over four ounces off it. Up to that point, uh, I was an uh, ounce and a quarter guy. And so um, I went through an old notebook of mine where I was keeping notes on that. And that plant actually went to 12 weeks when I before I cut it. And typically... I would cut uh, between eight to 10, uh, depending, right? So that's something to think of because that's the big, I've never, I've done ChemDog a few times since then, the other seeds out of that pack and I've gotten good harvests, but I've never gotten one as big as that plant. So maybe that extra two weeks that I don't normally Whoa. go is the difference. Definitely. definitely. Some, some, some strains actually will start rotting or, or uh, at a certain point they just they don't get any better and some really don't start developing until that later flower time into those last few weeks like you might be getting up to week 10 it's like oh it's looking good looking good and then boom that extra two weeks just sends that into like maximum overdrive to where it it doubles in weight it doubles its potency it just it really develops in that last couple of weeks yeah but a lot of people don't have the patience or they're you know they they want they need or that they just simply can't they they need their medicine right yep. so you don't have that 12 week window to uh, to be going but a lot of strains do need a lot longer than the eight or, or even 10 um i noticed that with our huckleberry soda purple even at 10 weeks i'm like yeah it was better than at eight but i'm like i think it can still she could probably keep keep going maybe even a week 13 or 14. Um, some sativas go 16 or 17 weeks. Yeah. Maybe even longer. I've, I've, I've heard of some stuff flowering for almost seven months. Yeah. Some I've, of those true land, true land race sativas. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of that. I'd like to try some of those, but uh, it's, those will be projects further down the road where you can donate or dedicate them one light or a full table or whatever to plants that are you're going to spend half a year in the flower cycle right 
It's uh, well, you got to be able to keep the some rest of those sativas. You need like a grain silo or something because they get like 20 feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> they get really big. Yeah, they're, they're very tall and lanky plants with like super long branches, and then you get like a quarter of a gram on each branch. <laughs> That's why nobody grows them, but it's apparently is the best. Those are the ones that give you the. I've never had a sativa that gives me that soaring cerebral or cerebral energetic high that they say or claim you get from sativas, right? But I believe they're out there. You just you don't see them too often because uh, it's not a commercially viable strain for for the amount of time and and uh, an effort that has to go into those real sativas and what you get out of it after isn't worth it for anyone to you know to give that away to anybody else they're going to keep that for themselves like that's a yeah. that's a connoisseur strain so it would be nice to bring something into that like I, that's one of my things is to bring strains that are this guy's charging 500 bucks an ounce and and all that shit and you know let's bring her down a, a saner level for everybody right okay. so i would like to bring in a, a couple sativas like that absolutely i don't have the room but we could build a room or something one day. Shit, dig us something underground so that by the time it gets to the top, it's <laughs> it's at eight feet or something, right? Yeah. I, I've seen guys put the yeah, they put their their pots and stuff like way down in the ground. Like dig pits and so that the plants are at like eight or ten feet by the time they're coming out of the ground or something. Or, oh one day. Yeah, I'll get there. One day. <laughs> I'm going to talk. Shout out to Murray. We need some Panama Red, buddy. Oh, I, I was talking to him I was, earlier today. I've been uh, I've been mentioning to him one strain in particular called it's called Pine Tar Kush, and it's really really heavy in the pinene terp. It's supposed to it's supposed to smell and taste almost like pine salt. The cleaner. Yeah. This might be off putting to some, but. To me, I've had strains like that before, and that pine taste is actually quite pleasant. It actually works in cannabis. So uh, we just been talking about it. Then he sent me a message today. He's like, Dave might have been ordered. I'm like, oh, okay. So we'll, <laughs> I'm going to go with a yes on that, that he probably did order them. And there's a chance that we'll probably get a couple seeds or, or something, or something will work out to where... Pine tar kush will be in the lineup. I know that. So shout out to Murray for, or I don't know. Uh, well, he doesn't like to be tagged on IG or anything. So I, I refer to him as Mr. X on Instagram, but he knows who he is. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'll mind us just using his first name on my YouTube channel where nobody that really knows him will uh, go. But, uh, Anyways, he, he when you were here for the filming of the last episode, he said he didn't want to be on camera because it's he wasn't licensed. So we just if that's all that's holding him back, we need to hurry up and get him his license. That poor guy, he's been waiting since like he's January, waiting February, he's, man. Yep, but there, uh, like we're still, I still have renewals like for our own. Yeah, but we're yep. they haven't even processed yet, and they put on their site now that. Uh, I don't know what you're at with, like, I, my own license is coming up here in November. Uh, I have to do my renewal right away. But they've put on their, on their Health Canada site that they're behind, like, six or seven months. So they said on there, as long as you're just doing renewals, send them in. They're going to get processed. It's going to take a long time for them to get caught up. But uh, they have a disclaimer on their site right now. So if anyone else is in the same boat wondering where their license is or is it coming, uh, yes, it is coming. Just be patient. And if you are not doing an address change or anything major on your license, then you have nothing to worry about. Your renewal will come and it will be backdated to whenever it does come. Everything, as long as you have submitted your renewal and stuff on time, you have nothing to worry about. It will come. So um, I'm waiting for, because we have four licenses. So we're waiting for two renewals to come. And yeah, Megan's just came like a few weeks ago. It was behind like five months. So I know Murray's is a first time, but he's got no, 
he's got nothing that would hinder him from getting his. So no. he's gonna get it. It's just and he just has to wait. He he's got some legit medical uh, conditions too. It's not our, not up to us to disclose any of them. But yeah, he he's he's legit. If if I can get my medical license, then he's a shoe in as well. Uh, so it's just mm-hmm. a matter of time. We renewed ours in fe- February, I believe it was, and they just came within the last month, month and a half. So it's uh, and it was less than two months from the time we mailed them in till the time we got them back when we originally mailed our applications in for the first time licenses, right? So, hey, but I get it, man. Health Canada, they're 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 pretty busy these days. It's understandable, but it sucks because especially for a guy like that, he's and I I I think he even got his prescription in the mail for twenty grams a yeah. day, or fifty grams a day, or whatever it is. So basically, you would think he would be allowed to do it, but at the same time, like if he did start up and he gets nailed for some on some bullshit technicality, uh, man, yeah, that yeah. just horrible. So, but hopefully, hopefully, Murray, you get some good news coming in the mail any day now, buddy. Uh, it should be. Well, yeah, no, anytime he he. He's like, oh, he's like, I got a parcel to pick up or something today. He's like, I hope it's my license. And so, yeah, it should be any day for him. As long as he's got his, he got his prescription already and stuff. So as long as you get, it's, so as soon as you get that part, it's already a shoe in. You just have to make sure your application is filled out correct. Once you send that in with your, your renewal and, uh, or your prescription and uh, then you're good to go. It'd be nice if we had a doctor here in 100 Mile that would do these prescriptions for us. So we didn't have to... I'm not sure if what company you used or, or whatnot, but uh, we used License to Grow. And it was like 800 bucks to license for the first year. And then we found another company called Medical Marijuana Services that they do it for, for just the cost of the... I think it's... 226 bucks with tax or something per license. That's what they charge. That's the bare minimum. Okay, we went with uh, the Do No Harm Clinic out of Kelowna. And okay. I believe it was both times for the first uh, licensing fee and then our uh, relicensing fee a year later. I believe it's 500 per license each time. And the wife and I are okay. both licensed. So... Well, that's it. Well, we found this. Yeah, MM, MMS services works for the, what what their catch is is they try to get you to sign up with one of the LPs as soon as you do your renewal to get that. So it gets they get a kickback from all the big guys. Yeah, that's where they're able to give you a discount. But you just tell them no, I produce my own medicine, and you don't have to accept Aurora or anybody else. And uh, yeah, they just charge because I think Health Canada. That's how. Health Canada makes money off of each one of these too. It's it's a bare it's a it's a minimum of two hundred dollars or something like that per license, no matter what. So I think I think a private doctor would would do it for twenty bucks, and then you'd still have to pay Health Canada another two hundred on top of that every year. But that's you know for peace of mind that few hundred bucks or whatever it's that's I don't mind. Hey man, it's the can't fuck with me license, right? Um, yeah, a lot of people, some people are okay with four plants at a time and that's all they will ever need. Uh, I don't fit that description. You do not fit that description. Uh, I smoke a lot of weed, so I need to be able to grow a lot of plants and, uh, not now I can grow a couple hundred or more if I want. Uh, well, I, I, I don't have the room to mark, to fulfill my licenses and I'm fine with that. Uh, Right, being that we're just medicinal growers, but I thought, uh, I thought that I can do grow so much more than I actually need. Right, say I get heavy into cloning, and I'm going to do breeding projects. Right, so to do several hundred of one one kind of seed, right, one strain, and be able to look for the best of the best, uh, I I can do that now. Uh, if I only yeah. could do four plants, it's hard to do breeding projects really hard oh, that's how i did my yeah, yeah. How, how do you have any medicine left over for for that i mean it's you, you're constantly 
with that four, you can't have a mother plant. You can't have cloning. You can't have any sort of, like you just said, any sort of breeding. You, you really can't even do any kind of pheno hunt um, unless you get clones with, I guess, if you don't have a license, you have to source them off the street, right? So <laughs> who knows what you're getting um, if you don't have a, if a trusted friend or, or whatnot, right? Um, yeah, so... Four plants is bullshit. <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, it, it, if, you're, if you're just a hobbyist and want to have four plants in the summertime or something outside on your deck, go for it, right? But for someone that relies on it and needs it year-round or something, then no, you need a you need an actual prescription, right? And I was just going to say, too, um, I've brought it up before, and I, I, I'll bring it up again on another million times. And I was saying it to Megan the other night. Uh, it would cost me about five hundred dollars a day from one of these licensed stores if I had to pur purchase my medicine. So I couldn't even afford to do that once. Well, I <laughs> let alone every day. Let alone every day. So. Well, I think yeah. about I, go, I, I think about myself, and I go through about two ounces a week. Plus a gram or more of con your gram or two at least of concentrates. So, at uh, at the at underground prices, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks, right, per week. If you were to go to government dispensary prices, you're probably looking at eight nine hundred a week. I couldn't afford that. That's uh, oh. that's that's more than my mortgage payment. Uh, is in a month. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know how any of these other people are. If they're just going in and uh, just having a one-time experience and seeing what it is, it is what it is. Uh, I won't say their name, but I was tipped off over the week. Should have a sticky pad and write the times down too. I and then you know what 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 time like at. Uh, 53.30, you stopped it, roughly. Oh, you should you should have seen my notepad for when I edited together the um, the first episode there. Because yeah. it, was, it was just like that. I'd have a pad sitting here with, like, a time here and a time here. And then an arrow pointing down with, the, like, say, a 37-second clip that I've got to insert to here. And just, oh, it, it was, like... That was a lot of work that went into that first podcast. But, you know, we should probably talk about that now. We have actually, we haven't addressed the fact that this is our second official podcast. Um, our third, technically, but we, we don't count the pilot. That was just a test drive. Uh, well, I can already tell it's getting... I'm more, I'm more relaxed. I, I I come into this thinking all day and even last night, what the hell we're going to talk about? Are, are we going to have any topics? And, and so I just jot a few things down. But I'm finding things just kind of flow naturally just sitting here and, and just talking it's without having, I mean, it's good to have an agenda and, and somewhat of a topics or whatnot, but. I think we're coming up with some good stuff here by just like winging it as well. Yeah, I have the cannabis. Yeah, I have the cannabis help with the talking. It's it's my natural tendency to try and wing stuff like this. Anyways, I'm not much of an actor or anything like that. No. It, just, it doesn't seem uh, real or organic to me. Like it's, I'd rather just sit here and, and have a conversation with my friend, and that's exactly what's going on. We just we got cameras and a recorder going so that we can show it to other people. I've shown the podcast to a few people now, and for the most part, we seem to be getting decent feedback. The last one was a little long, and I get that. It was just I what I should have done is it, well, if we had the forethought, we should have filmed a couple of different intros to that on um, that yeah. day when I had the time, and then we could have maybe cut it into two podcasts. Yeah. I think maybe uh, that would have been best for because two and a half hours, man. That's a long time that's to try fair. and sit. So then people but, lose interest, and it's like maybe they miss something good at the end, right? Like, yeah. So like I went into um, 
Caribou Garden Supply. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Brandon and the gang down at Caribou uh, Garden Supplies there. Um, I went in there, talked to Mike, and fuck, I just forgot what I was going to say. Aquaponics. Uh, yeah, well, I ended up talking to him about aquaponics, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> Well, did you what talk did you, to him about my, like microbial mass or? Ah, uh, no, not with him. With oh yeah, well actually, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I was about the podcast. Can you roll me a joint, please? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, I'll go and do that right now. Then. All right, I'm just gonna let the wife get by here, and then. Uh, oh yeah. So. Yeah, I went down to uh, Caribou Garden Supply, and Mike was. Fuck it, what the fuck did I just forget it again? <laughs> Maybe I don't need that joint now. Uh, <laughs> see, is it this? See, but this is when, like, one of the problems with trying to tell uh, pre constructed stories, uh, though, too, and then go for memory, right? Is it's just like I smoke a lot of pot and I just blank out, so it's easier to just have an organic conversation. Uh, well, yeah, because then you're not trying to. Go off a script in your mind that it's like, oh, oh, you go to flip a page and she's gone, and then uh, I know what you're saying. You go, yeah. you come to a blank spot. Well, you're like, what were we talking about? Happens to me lots, man. Yeah, so... I'm surprised I can still carry on a conversation some days. Oh, dude, it gets bad. <laughs> After all the drugs I've done, it's a miracle. <laughs> oh, <I bet laughs> or that I can have a coherent conversation. I can still speak English. That's legible. <laughs> yeah yeah well one of my problems is that when i have a conversation is i always try and put so much information into it that a lot of the yeah. time i'm just i'm thinking about what to add well not even thinking about it, just adding so much to the conversation that you end up fucking losing your original point and people are just probably looking at me going oh that guy's fucking mental or something <laughs> but well it, Anyways, yeah, so I, I remember what I was getting at. I went down to Caribou Garden Supply there. Shout out to Brandon and the gang. And Mike was down there, and he said he's been watching um, the cha uh, my, my channel a bit and the aquaponics and what's going on with that. And when it came to uh, the podcast, he hadn't seen the second one yet. And so I was kind of tell I had to tell him, like, beforehand, like, okay, so the first... 18 minutes and 50 seconds there's a lot of background noise due to the fan and then the dab pressing because he said he wants me to put together a dab porn reel which that's going to be a project we're going to work on here pretty soon and uh so uh we'll get the dab porn reel going on and fuck where i'm flaking out here well i i, I thought of something like that of having like this like a dab extravaganza with just like shatter and rosin and oil and butter and just like fucking everything and just dab after like i don't know if we have to or i don't know like a dab bar or something like that you know like or dab buffet it's just like <laughs> Shit, i can't even carry on a conversation right now <laughs> But that, that's well, or we could like have that into like the like a, as part of an intro or part of our intro or something or background or I don't know or like a dab reel, like you were just saying, like yeah, just showcasing dabs, like our rigs and stuff. Or I only have one rig, and actually, I I I'm gonna give a shout out to a company called Goose Glass. I haven't given them a, a deposit yet. But something I'm going to work on next year, they make custom glass pieces. Uh, but what this guy has, it's 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 an old style shower or uh, old style tap. And it looks like the tap is on and water pouring out of the top and splashing everywhere. And at the bottom of it is a bong. So it's like water pouring, but it's all one piece. It's fucking crazy looking. So I talked to him, I'm like, do you think you could put like a logo or something in there? And he's like, oh yeah, he's like, I've done, he's made 17 of these pieces now. He makes one at a time. And each one is custom and each one is whatever. So uh, it's something I'm, I'm going to have to save up for or whatever, but I'm going to work towards next year having it one made as like a, just as like a showpiece that if we go to 
set up some of these events or whatever where we have a, a display or a booth. Well, I'll just have it as like a as like a display piece, yeah, yeah, part of the background or something, right? Or let people come and take a dab out of it for like five bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. I don't know. I I was paying five bucks a dab out at on Vancouver in in 2018 at that 420 festival. So I'm sure we could set something like that up. Oh, I if would we ever have a. What we should do is set up like a coffee bar kind of thing where you can just go there and smoke dope and do stuff like that. Because, see, that'd be a perfect place to showcase dabs and stuff like that. And then you'd have like some pretty wicked munchies and stuff to you could just snack on there afterwards, too. They don't need to be have anything to do with weed. I'd be actually that. I wonder what the legality is on that because you know, all it is is just a food place, right? A restaurant. And like, there's a. There's a place in uh, in Ontario called Kelly's Green Lounge that they're doing something. They they're already doing that. It, it's a bar, but it's just for cannabis. And but it, but you know they don't sell any any cannabis or nothing. You're allowed to just come in there and, and consume. You bring your own weed and hang out. But they have munchies. They have music. They have uh, games, board games, and stuff like that. I think it's just like a cool hangout spot. Well, you have, like, Mad Carcassonne tournaments. I, uh, that's, like, in my opinion, the best board game ever is Carcassonne. I don't know if you've ever played it, but we should play some that. If you're into board I've games. heard of it, but no. I My my ultimate go-to is Risk. Like, I'm talking, like, play night for, like, a week. Like, the same game. In the evening. Oh, that's, yes. Risk. Oh. And Monopoly, I guess. Everyone plays Monopoly or has. Yeah, those ones don't hold my attention anymore. They just, they take too long. I need to be able to have it done in about an hour, I find. Carcassonne's a good one. Like, uh, just trying to think what other good ones are out there. Like, Settlers of Catan, that's a good one. You might have heard of that. Uh, Ticket to Ride, that one was fun. We went through a big board game phase a couple of years ago, where is this all of a sudden, for like a year straight, it was just a new game every month we seemed to be buying. And uh, it was it was good, and it's good for the kids. It helps them with like math, reading, memory function, you name it. So I should actually play yeah, board yeah. With my kids. Board games board. are very stimulating. I I try to do well. I haven't played a board game in a long time, but I try to do uh, not even Sudoku or something, but just to stay sharp once in a while, just like puzzle solving or just like trivia and stuff like that. Yep. Oh. Geek, geeky stuff that stoners would do. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, uh, yeah. All right. I forgot what I was going to say. I better do a dab. My mind isn't mushy enough, I guess. Better, uh, really so, what I was just doing, I just lit up the torch here. Showed out the burns o -matic. Yeah. I had to get this from Burgess the other day. Shout out to Burgess. They're actually good if you need any water filters or anything like that. Boys down there are very knowledgeable. Tasty. What, is this uh, what, what are you smoking on over there? I have some violator butter that I'm smoking on tonight. Okay, I, I, tasty. I still got the MKU rosin going on, but we're getting towards the end of that, so I'm gonna need to press something else here before too long. I think I have maybe enough left for one dab. Oh, yeah, getting low. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the rosin that you made there, the MKU. 
Yeah. That's what you gave me last. It's nice, man. It turned it buttered up really nice. And it's really, really fucking strong. And I'm gonna swear when I say that, because it's true. <laughs> it really is what fucking hits me hard. Well, thanks coming from you. That's once again I feel like that's uh high praise because once again you're not a beginner smoker. You smoke no. possibly you probably smoke more dope than I do, and there's I, I don't know many people that can say that, right? So for you to say something hits you hard, that's uh that's pretty good for well, me. Well, it comes back into uh your rosin's a full spectrum extract. I mean it's got all the right components in it that someone like me with a high tolerance needs. But and on the same token, I don't need to sit and do six dabs of that. Like two dabs is perfect. Yeah. Oh, and okay, so and also speaking of the MKU uh rosin there. So we sent a couple samples into the Hurt and Hippie, Mr. Gord there. And he did a yeah. review of our product on his show. So you guys can see, check that out on YouTube uh, if you want on the Hurt and Hippie YouTube channel. I forget the exact name of the video. Or if you go to our caribouheartorganics.net website, I managed to yeah. put a link to the video up in our review section. Uh, it took me a awesome. while to figure out how to do that. But anyways, to me, that was so cool. I, I So now I fully, I, well, maybe not fully, but I understand why you send your products into other people to review them. Because to watch the video of Gord sitting there and, you know, trying out the body butter and then having to hit off the MKU. And I should point out, I've never met Gord personally. We talk on Instagram. I've only known him as long as you and I have been doing the podcasts, right? Um, so he has no real bias towards me in any way, shape, or form. Just here you no, go, no, buddy. No, no. Here you've got some. Uh, That's what I was just stuff. gonna get at. He's it's it, it's it's a great way. It's it, well, you mentioning that un, unbiased. It's a good it's a good way to see number one what your products do for other people, but at the same time. Once you're getting your foot in the door and stuff too, it's a good way for them to not just give you, like, say, you're going to get a positive review because it's your buddy or something, right? Like, you're, you're getting an honest opinion of your product that is coming from someone that, say, doesn't know your whole background or anything yet, right? Yeah. I, I have Gord, which is great for reviews, and I also have one of my best ones is my, is my mom, who doesn't follow us at all on Instagram has no idea the stuff I post, has no idea anything I tell her about any of our products. She just gets a surprise when my mom makes an order or something. I'll throw in a quarter of something new or whatever, and I'll just tell her the name of it. And then I'll ask her after, what did this do for you, right? Because I have it written down and stuff, what I think the terpenes and stuff taste like and stuff, and then I wait for everybody else's opinion. And I get different feedback from everybody. I get some of the same results <coughs> for effect, but because everybody has different taste buds and maybe some people are cigarette smokers or something or, or whatnot, right? Everybody's taste palettes are going to be different. Some are going to tell you that they got uh, cheese off of it or garlic or something or lemons or, and stuff. So I take all of that in and then... I, I put that in. so for first times for before we have any of our stuff actually tested because I don't know what the actual terpenes and stuff are I need to have a description for my product and say what it does so then I take everybody's what it, feedback and I put that all into what I come up with the, for my product descriptions and stuff so it's great right and it's all unbiased opinions and, it's, it, and it, I love it. And it, they're honest. You can't get any any better of a review, man. And then Gord has that kind of down-home hippie feeling where you kind of feel like you're sitting in the living room smoking with the guy, right? Yeah. Or you're hanging out. That's the kind of vibe I get from his videos. They're they're nice and raw. And, they're, and it's just they're right to the point. Yeah, yeah, he just seems like he, yeah, he seems like the kind of guy I can sit here and do what you and I are doing right now and just bullshit with. Yeah. Hmm. 
<coughs> you got it. it was I watched it. It was something unboxing. <coughs> Sorry, say again. So, something unboxing. It's called Gord's video. The one he his the review he did for you. Okay. Uh, actually, I, you know what? I could not be an asshole. We're another un. Look it up right now. See, and are, are you able to edit things into these Skype stuff? Like, could you have a banner scroll across, like, with your, with your website and stuff, or or a link to Gord's video? That's good. That's like, you know how on, on, like, you know how on YouTube videos, people are like, uh, if you look up in the top corner, and then they'll have, like, a link to something? Like, can you do that with these videos, or No. I'm, I probably can. I haven't tried doing any um, editing with and putting words or banners, headings and stuff like that into the yet, into it yet. That's going to be probably, I'll probably start doing that with this one here. But yeah, if we can do that, then anytime we mention somebody like Gord, and we can just send a little love to his YouTube channel or whatever, and, and his Instagram page, and um, also... Other companies like uh, that we use and like to shout out, you know, like uh, Caribou Garden Supply out of 100 Mile here. Um, you know, they're a great company. I love going in there. Everybody's got a great attitude, very knowledgeable, right? So um, whenever we talk about Caribou Garden Supply, we could show a banner uh, heading under the screen or whatever uh, with contact info for them. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of blanking out here. <laughs> oh. oh, um, Gord's video, Gifts of Cannabis. Is, uh, ah, what okay. So, um, but anyways, yeah, thanks, thanks, Gord. I really sincerely do appreciate that. Uh, it was, it's cool. It was actually, I didn't think I would use this word to describe it, but exhilarating was kind yeah. of what it was, right? You're watching a guy on TV send love to you and your projects that you do so it, it was very very cool well it kind of puts it into perspective there right? makes it it's like here we go like you know what your product is and stuff and now you're seeing it out there doing its thing right yeah and it's getting recognition from somebody else and it got good recognition right yeah it started his neck started feeling better right on the air, which is, says, says something about your butter there too, right? <laughs> yep, fast acting. The stuff, it doesn't take long for it to kick in. So yeah, it starts working pretty quick. Yep, oh, well, that's good. And uh, it's something that I use frequently. You know, I get the body aches and pains that go with swinging a saw around all day long. The guys on uh, that I work with, most of them have used it, and they all say, "Yeah, it works for sure." Uh, we've even heard a rumor: uh, a friend of a friend tried it on some eczema, and apparently, it helped make the uh, skin irritation go away, and like just back huh. to normal skin. Uh, I, I, we don't know that person, um, so I haven't seen it uh, personally, so I can't say yes, it did happen, but. And rumor has it that is the case. I wonder how that would be on psoriasis. It would be worth trying, I would think. Yeah, I should get. I should give my mom some to try. She's got it really bad on her knees and on her elbows. Is that so? Okay, well, we'll send a jar that way. Uh, when uh, next time I run into you, which uh, we should try and do an in-person um, podcast session uh, next week, if you're able to yeah. get get away. I should, my power pull is getting put in on Friday as far as I know. So okay. if you're able to come over on the weekend and then we could get a start at least uh, of what it is I want to do with uh, my new grow room. I'll get you, you know, help me figure that out. Well, the 5th and the 6th, I'm free. And then I got my surgery on the 10th. So I think I'll be out of commission for that weekend following and then i'll be good to go again after that okay the 12th i don't think i'll be able i don't even know if i'll be able to talk uh because they're taking out a wisdom tooth and part of a molar on this side and something up here as well the last bit of a wisdom tooth or something or the fracture i don't know but apparently they got to dig in there so 
See how yeah, it is after when it wake up. Yeah, you're not gonna be overly talkative that day. So, but no. Uh, no, I'll probably be all doped up anyway. So, not on cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> just put on one of them COVID masks and just talk like Charlie Brown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Speaking of that, have you? I'm gonna talk to you. One of them to work and play about getting some stuff made this year, like some toques. Okay. Thought maybe these podcasts would be a good uh, way to show off some merchandise and stuff, like of our own. Absolutely. So I think we should get get some shirts and stuff made. So. Oh, you know, there's that Sherry shirt shack, and then I seen that Work and Play does custom embroidery or something, so uh, it's worth looking into. Well, if we, what all I'm waiting for to, for shirt designs and stuff like that is uh, some artwork. I've reached out to a few friends that say they'll design like a logo for the company Caribou Heart Organics and a few other things. Because uh, Sarah and I, we we've decided we want to buy a shirt press and all that. Uh, so we could start doing our own merchandise. That way, you know, you could just go buy a box of blank shirts and uh, whatever mm -hmm. you need for doing the pressing. And we could cut costs down on a lot of that kind of stuff if we can do oh, a lot of work ourselves. Like crazy. But my, yeah, problem, that's... my problem is, is I my, my artistic talent is I can draw you a mean stick man. But that's where my artistic talent begins and ends. Uh, so Same with me. I can't draw <laughs> <laughs> so relying have, for people sucks sometimes. I have my buddy Kevin working on a logo for the weed on tap. I actually should ask him. I'll maybe ask him after we're done here tonight how it's going with that. It's been a couple weeks now, so. And I, yeah, I'm the same way. I used uh, that Wix, Wix logo maker or whatever to do ours. Or I did... Our first couple of logos I did myself just on the paint program on my on my laptop. It's got like a 3D part. So I just fucked around with a maple leaf and, and some letters. And uh, I think I fluked it, actually, how I came up with the first logo. And then second logo, yeah. You just type in, like, on Wix, I just typed in cannabis and a bunch of pot leaves showed up. And you just start playing around. You can just keep clicking on stuff until you see something you like. And then, yeah, I think there's like 50 bucks or something for them to make it. Huh. So that's another option. Well, no, because I want cool stuff, like 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 good artwork involved with it, right? Because that's one thing we'd like to show off is uh, cannabis culture. And uh, really cool artwork goes hand in hand with that. So I, I, yeah, I, want, yes, something yeah. plain. I, I want something where... If I'm walking down the street and I see a shirt, I'm like, yeah, I want that. Like, where did you get that? Um, and I think uh, we could totally market ourselves, both of our companies, as well as the podcast and, and other joint ventures as well. And once we like, we get a few things like uh, the shirt press and probably, you know, and a few people that can do some artwork for us. So we have the prints uh, or whatever you need, the original or the artwork to put to the shirts. I I think uh, I think that would be yeah. I, I think there's a market for that because like you go into a head shop right and just like oh fuck look at that shirt right. Oh yeah. No, a lot of them are crazy expensive in head shops too. 60 bucks or something for like a zigzag shirt like could do a bit better than that exactly so if you cut that in half or even get like depending on how much it's going to cost you to source your original blank shirts but i'm thinking that's not going to be overly expensive either right uh you could probably you know save like 20 20 bucks a shirt or something like that so if you and if you're, they're decent quality on top of that even better I think, uh, I think yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. someone will pay a bit more for something that's not going to fade out after one wash or something like that, too, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I thought about getting some like some nice toques, like stitched 
so that they last a while. But I don't know. I have no idea what that costs. I don't know how many, if there's a minimum order or, or what, so. I've heard embroidery you know, I I, is expensive. Yeah? Yeah. I, it's, I've never looked into it, but uh, when I was firefighting, one of the things you do is, is a lot of people, they'll have, uh, like, patches or other kind of souvenirs that they'll trade with for firefighters from other countries or different units and whatnot. And uh, patches is one of the things that people like to go after. So I talked to my boss with that company about getting done. He was like, yeah, the, the price alone of trying to do that isn't worth it. So, but uh, he didn't, it's not like I asked for any kind of ballpark price on that either. And that, for those patches, you're talking about just kind of giving them away. Uh, whereas you're actually looking at turning a profit for your company. So, of course, you're gonna, you got to spend right. money to make money, right? You know, well, I get lots of people asking me about tukes and stuff and winter gear. And so, and we're coming into our third year now. I think it's time to get something out there. I, I got it. I made like six shirts a while back. They weren't very expensive. I think there was like eight bucks a shirt or something like that to have them made. So that was all right. There were nothing really special. Just said there buds, edibles, and concentrates in the back. And then. Just the logo on the front. That was it. Huh. Pretty plain Jane. And I'm sure if you watch them like more than twice, stuff's gonna start peeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't even have any more. I, mean, I gave them all away. I didn't even keep one for myself. Hmm. That's Maybe all I'll right. get some more of those. What's that? I said that's all right. Advertising is more important, anyways. Yeah. Well, I asked the wife to roll me a joint before she went upstairs, and that was however long ago, and no sign of her. So I guess, uh... Another dab? Well, or I could just roll one myself. So, but dab is quicker and easier, and makes well, my I might have a dab. Uh, maybe dab it is. <clears throat> Dabble do, dabble do, yabba dabba do. and I think something else. Okay. <laughs> That's the good stuff right there. Did you like a mountain too much? <laughs> yeah, I'll try and what I'll try and do is I'll edit in some uh, some writing there for when the torches are going. Be like, dab session in progress, dab session in progress, or something. <laughs> like an alarm going off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, and then, I got another idea I've thought of. So when I, I was down last time, I was down to. Caribou Garden Supply. I was talking to Mike, and he said he wanted me to do that dab reel, uh, sorry, the dab porn reel, right? And so I was thinking, we've got some pretty good footage already, but there's people talking in it or whatever, and if you mash it all together, it would look weird. And we're not allowed to just take songs and you and put them up on YouTube, right? So I was thinking we should get Murray because he's he has a guitar. We should get him to write like a 70s porn style kind of thing for so that we can play during the dab porn reels. Yeah, dab porn. Just like a 30 second, 45 second loop that we could do. 
Well, yeah, it's something that we won't get in spit for having any kind of licensing infringements, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then they get, if we can, get them to do a couple different riffs. First off, like, when how we were just doing a dab, right? So if yeah. we know we were going to have a lull in talking, but we don't really want to edit it out for whatever stupid reason, we could have, uh, like, Murray do up, like, the dab riff or something like that. Oh, actually, yeah, dude, that that's a badass idea. Just some, like, super heavy death metal chugging, just like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, yeah. Murray, if you're watching, and I know you will, buddy, you got some working to do on the guitar for us, buddy. And we will pay you for yeah. it. Get a jam yeah. happening. Yeah. Maybe Give me some could, seeds for it. Maybe he could teach me how to play my bass guitar, and I could even help. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bass, but I, I I wouldn't say I'm a bass player. It would be insulting to people. I know how to play the instrument. Well, it's going to take lessons, right? Or practice, uh, no? <laughs> the thing is, uh, staying consistent on the practice with me is I, I get so much going on. Like, a lot of the times I travel for work or whatever. Plus, you got the wife and the kids at home. Uh whatever needs to be done at home, right? It's just, uh, it's it's hard to make it my priority. Uh, so I, I, just, I go through spells. I'll, I'll play it a lot for a while, and then it'll sit there. But to, to start writing uh, cheesy little riffs to throw in on a podcast, though, that could be fun if I were to get in the habit of doing it. Man, Marie can be our own... We'll be having a radio station soon. Dude, that'd be all right. Having our own, own people making jingles for us, like yeah. Mr. Scream or whatever from Wayne's World. Oh, yeah, that'd be we like have like an a cappella group doing it for us, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be great. <laughs> that would be awesome. I thought about getting something for the background that just says on air. Like what you see in a radio station or something. Like a, just a little. Actually, I have it. I have a. I bought it from the source like a couple of years ago. It was in like their clearance rack there. It's just a light board and it has like a million different letters. You can spell anything on it. I, I, I think I have a picture of it. So it says Canada's finest somewhere. That's cool. I should set that up. Because I just put like on air or something in the background on that. So. Yeah, can I'm you, all about the background stuff. Yeah, program it so it'll say different things. Will it do that? Like, well, uh, no, like, no, it's not. No, no, you got to manually put in all the letters. It's a two <coughs> thing. Oh, okay. <coughs> but I know what you're saying. Yeah, it'd be cool to have one that you can manually have shit scrolling. Yeah, probably yeah. get one of those from Amazon. Yeah, something we can have uh, a couple different uh, things on, like something like when dab time comes up, be like, I'll dab to that. Uh, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. That'd We're be full pretty of, sweet, yeah. Full of all sorts of wonderful, cheesy ideas. We just lack resources. <laughs> we'll get there, though. We'll get there. I have no doubt about it. So, I, I, um, I think we've got about an hour, somewhere between an hour and fifteen, an hour and a half half worth of footage recorded now so how about we shut this one down yeah. or, like do you want to work on stuff when you're out of town uh yeah we can if you've got the time like i'll be back thursday night we'll back. oh okay well if, if i mean if you don't if you're back we can stick to our same thursday weekend thing like thursday skype weekend get together or whatever i i'm still down with that like i know you had some stuff come up there last weekend or whatever but yeah shit happens i understand but um that worked out for the better anyways because we're i had that room i tore down and set back up and replanted so that took like 51 hours i think man it was crazy so i don't think i would have been very good on camera anyways like i would have been tired so i'm actually glad we waited yeah that was kind of my thing i got back sunday night and it was like I, I, I think I got back at about five or six or something, and I could have done it, and I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm just, I, 
I, I'm not in the mood to talk. I mean, if you're not in the mood to talk, uh, how is it going to relate on camera when you got one guy just trying to, come on, man, say something. <laughs> yeah, so, well, I mean, our body language and everything too, right? Yeah. I probably wouldn't even have a smile on my face. Probably would have to try to force it where uh, I think they come on camera and just be naturally bubbly and in a good mood and stuff. And that's that's kind of key to a good podcast as well. I, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think uh, if one of us has something going on where it's just like you can't you can't put on the face, yeah, I just say hey, we can't do it today for whatever for that reason, right? Because it's it, it, that we're having a good time. That is the whole reason we decided to do this. We like talking about weed. We really like it a lot. Yeah. And so and, and people pick up on that. It's supposed to be fun to watch, and if you got two guys that are just really kind of phoning it in what's the point you're not going to put up quality content i don't believe it so no no so but yeah do you have any interest in working on a second one tonight at all or are you pretty well done oh what did you say we had an hour and a half yeah well i mean it's i hear things firing up behind me now so i'll see how i am in it i don't know i can't promise anything but I could go back and help Megan do some trimming or something or whatever. So I got other stuff I can do. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty happy with tonight. If you're okay. good. Okay, yeah, I can work on this for tonight and see what I can do with it. And it'll be a lot more manageable to for editing than the last stuff too. Like it was like five and a half hours of footage that I had to go through, and some of that stuff trying to fit it into place, you're watching the same part like 15, 20 times. Most of them won't work that many times, but, you know, it, it does get to that point and you're just like, oh, my God, I, I just, I can't see this part anymore. <laughs> so, uh... Well, that's something I, I, yeah, I'd like to be a part of, too, once you get rolling more. I know it's a lot of work for just one guy to sit and do all the, the hard part of it, right? It's easy yeah. to hit record, but I know it... For you to take time and go and sit and piece it all together, yeah, it's not easy, man. It's it's it's, it's hard to sit at a screen and do shit like that for hours on end. Well, to be honest, I think at a certain point, um, yeah, well, maybe especially maybe on the Skype ones, I think could be minimal editing if we can just get good conversation flow going, and uh, yeah. like. You try and remember to like uh, let the other guy stop talking for, a, and then have that couple second break there where neither of you talk, because I find that uh, sometimes when if there's a constant noise in between there, where so, like I start talking just as you finish, trying to stop it in the right spot is it, it's hard, and that's where you end up watching the same thing like eight bazillion times, and you're just like. A, a well, can you hear free? Can you hear frequency in the background now? Because I I have I a room that turned on, like I can hear the the ballast doing a thing, like the knee, right? You can't. It's not microphone's not picking it up though. I think I could barely hear a knee, but it's faint. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Well, I guess if we're gonna wrap this out. Uh, or wrap this up. Wrap this up. Why don't uh, you tell the folks where they can find you at? Um, yeah. Uh, well, if people can find us at uh, Canada's Finest at Gmail dot com. And what we'll do is we'll take some of your information there just to make sure that you're a Canadian citizen or resident, age nineteen or older. And then uh, we'll tell you a little bit about what we do, and we'll go from there. Okay. Sounds good. Was that good? Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, what about your Instagram page? Oh, uh, our Instagram page is C Finest Enthusiast Page 2018. Okay. And and we might have to make a banner or something for that after. I'll, it's a pretty long name, but. <laughs> tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll work on um, editing a, a banner and stuff like that across there uh, for this one. I'll try and I won't rush this one out. I'll work on a Thursday release for this one. How's that sound? 
And then that way it'll, it'll give me time to uh, try and work on little uh, little things like that. Because it's just the, t the time constraint, it, it's not, there's not an overwhelming amount of material to go through on this. I'm willing to bet by the time it's done, I've got probably a little over a half an hour and a half of footage to go through. And we'll probably cut, fuck, maybe 20 minutes out of it. Right? So. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a pretty, pretty solid flow tonight. Where it wasn't, yes. I mean, there's some dead time, a couple screw ups or whatever, but we're getting better at it. Like, it's getting yeah. more, like I said, it's just, it'll start becoming like natural, like the back of our hands, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I want to give a quick shout out to Brandon and the gang down at Caribou Garden Supply. Uh, I talked to Brandon a while back and he said that. If anyone goes into his store and mentions that the uh, Weed on Tap crew said to send them down there, he'll give you a discount down at the store. Throw on a 20% discount down there on Mondays. So maybe you might be able to get that on a different day of the week too, uh, if you mention the Weed on Tap. Don't quote me on it. Brandon did not tell me that. He said he will offer a discount though. If you go down there and say the Weed on Tap crew sent, down, sent you down, but let's send them some business and the discount will get bigger. Uh, Excellent. Those guys are great, great. Uh, and you can find them uh, just off of Exeter Road here in 100 Mile. Awesome. Okay, so, or, oh yeah, and uh, as for uh, us in uh, Caribou Heart uh, Organics, you can find us on our YouTube channel, Caribou Heart Organics as well as our Instagram page, Caribou Heart Organics. You can email us at uh, caribouheartorganics at gmail.com, as well as our, and we have a website, caribouheartorganics.net. Geez, that's a whole lot of Caribou Organics, uh, Caribou Heart Organics oh. spitting out. But also, um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this once uh, the split screen happens in the editing process, but behind me, playing all night so far, this is the Weed on Tap sizzle reel. And what you're seeing is pictures of buds, male plants was the last one I saw there. Um, some concentrates, all done so far by Trevor and I through our respective talents, uh, or whatever you'd like to call it. If you would like to have pictures of your buds, your rosin, your shatter, whatever you got, up here on the screen. You can get a hold of us at caribouheartorganics at gmail.com um, and just put uh, sizzle reel under the subject line so that we know uh, what it's for. Give us your name if you want to be mentioned on here. If you want to be anonymous, that's cool. We don't have to shout, that, shout you out. We can just show your pictures up there if you want people to see it. Uh, also, tell us what it is we're seeing. If it's a strain you're growing, what strain is it? If it's uh, concentrate that you're real proud of, uh, show tell us what concentrate it is. Or if it's just a picture of your grow room, uh, let us just let give us some info on what it is we're showing, and we will gladly get you up here. This is meant to be a community friendly broadcast that we're doing, and uh, community participation is appreciated. Um. Okay. Uh, how is that? Uh, anything else you got to add? Awesome. Or? I think. All right, okay. on. All right, buddy. Uh, you have yourself a great night. I'll keep in touch uh, with the editing and let you know how it's going in terms of uh, if we can let banners fly across the screen and whatnot. And uh, okay. yeah, I will talk to you thir Thursday. Actually, should be a busy night. Mm -hmm. So if if you're able to do another podcast sooner, like uh, at night while you're gone. Or while I'm gone, that'll, that'll be great. If not, we'll, man, we might just have to wait till Sunday. But this podcast yes. that we're doing right now will be released on Thursday. Okay. okay. Well, if we can before Thursday, all, all I do uh, uh, is just like uh, just like a day, it's day's notice. Like if you want to plan for Tuesday night or something, I can make that work because Tuesday is one of our off days. So, okay. Okay. Well, let's, yeah, let's maybe, uh, do a tentative for Tuesday then, and just yes. see, see what we can do. Um, I, I can't give you, can't say a time yet. I'll have to wait till tomorrow night and just see how the flow of the day goes when I'm out of town. But 
I've got a really Check quiet it. roommate that I'll be working with, so that should be very, very doable. Okay. Very yeah. doable. All right. All right, man. All right, brother. Uh, you have a great night. We'll talk to you later. Yes, you yeah. too. Okay, Brad, it was awesome. Have a great night. Ciao, buddy.